Holy mother of- Whoa! That- Hello everyone, welcome back. My name is Kyle. I make reactions to movies and TV shows. So, <clears throat> today we are heading into another reaction of Hannibal. Are you ready for it? Am I ready for it? <laughs> I like this show, but oh my god, it is ex it is an exhausting show to watch. It really is. Um, I read a comment that said... Uh, Yellow was the incorrect color for this show. I guess crimson blue is supposed to be. Is this what crimson blue? Look I think that's what the comment said. Crimson blue. It said blue. Um, so I guess blue is in fact like the color of this show. So we are we're heading from yellow and going to blue. <clears throat> uh, also, quick note about comments. So I do have someone else read my comments and then tell me if I can read them. You guys. <laughs> I watch Eureka, I watch uh, 12 Monkeys, I watch uh, X-Files. Uh, there have been a couple comments that run really close to the spoiler territory. Please don't do that. Please, please don't do that, okay? The last episode of the show was really heavy on the developing relationship between um, Hannibal and Abigail. Uh, the Hobbs daughter. And, you know, I was thinking about that. Uh, and I wonder if there's a reason, because like the reason this show is so mentally taxing, I think, is because it is an incredibly... <sighs> it's not exposition, right? I don't think this would count as exposition. Because, uh, no, it's not. I don't know what the word is. The show has a lot of stuff going on inside characters' heads that you're not privy to and it tries to make you privy to it through the actions and subtle nuances of what they're saying and i think that that's a very interesting thing that the show does because you have the character of will who is supposed to be like this empathetic person who can easily step into the shoes of all these killers that he's chasing and that's actually what the show is asking of the viewers too for you to step into the mindset of Hannibal or Will, uh, who Hannibal is a killer. Will isn't a killer, but from what we've seen, I just I think Hannibal is getting him there. I really do. I think that the whole story is going to be Hannibal progressing Will towards actually killing someone. But I'm pushing that aside for the moment. What I was talking about this whole long. <laughs> long-winded way that my brain got here uh, was the relationship between Hannibal and Abigail. Because this show is so focused on what's going on in the mindset of these people, and I want to believe that they have reasons for doing certain things in the show, that they're not just doing it to be there. I wonder if Hannibal. So we had an episode that highly focused on Hannibal, not Hannibal, on mothers. I wonder if Hannibal has some kind of unresolved feeling towards his own mom or towards... But he didn't really treat Abigail like his mom. He treated her more like a sister or a daughter. So it kind of makes me wonder if Hannibal has some kind of sibling issue. The way he goes after Will, the way he treats Abigail... Um, I could be reading way too much into this. I'm just saying that if I was looking for a motivation behind Hannibal's whatever he's doing, taking on Will, taking on Abigail, I would say that it's either sibling or child related. That H Hannibal either has or had a sibling or has or had a child. That might be a big stretch. I don't know if I'm going to include those. <laughs> I think I may have just really ran with it in my head. You guys know, you guys know how I like to run with uh, these things. So, I don't know. Will's motivation seems to be much more um, in your face and direct. We've gotten a lot of exploration of why Will does what he does. You know, he has issues with his ability to empathize with people which probably led to a large interest in criminal activity and understanding why criminals are the way they are. I would not be surprised and we may never get the answer to this or maybe we already did and I wasn't paying attention and please don't tell me but I would not be shocked if when Will was a child 
he had a difficult time relating to people and understanding why they were doing what they did, even though he could understand why they felt what they felt, so that he turned to psychology as a way to understand other people. You know, kind of like how psychopaths will attempt to mimic other people. Maybe Will was really curious about himself and why he was able to feel all these things that he was feeling. So he he gets into psychology. He goes, you know, looking at, oh, okay, well, criminals are here. And that is what eventually leads him into the FBI. That'd be a good explanation as to his motivation. Um, just wanting to understand himself more. If I include this, please don't roast me to death in the comments if I'm like a mile off, because I realize we're only four episodes in. We don't have a whole lot of detail on what's going on in these guys' life outside of work, so I could be really, really wrong. Let's get to it. Like if you want to like, comment down below. Full version will be in the description. And let's get to eating people. I wonder if Hannibal and Will are going to kill someone together. I'm surprised that Hannibal and Will are so lovey-dovey. From the first episode when they were having breakfast, I really thought that the show was foreshadowing an adversarial relationship. And I guess it could still be adversarial. Will is a cop. Hannibal is a serial killer. But I think Will is eventually going to become a killer. So it hasn't seemed... Very adversarial. Sleepwalking? Or is it a dream? If he is sleepwalking, how come we can see the deer? So, I going with dream? Dream while sleepwalking. I mean... I wonder what this deer represents to Will. Jack is going to have to pull some strings to explain this. You lost? They're going to think he's drunk or high. What? What's your name? Mr. Short Shorts. Where do you live? Wolf Trap, Virginia. <laughs> We're in Wolf Trap, so that's good. Hi, Winston. Oh, hey, puppy. Can I sit down? My feet are sore. Do you have a history of sleepwalking, Mr. Graham? I'm not even sure if I'm awake now. Some tense ass music. Although I may be, is it safe to assume you're not sleepwalking now? I'm sorry, it's so early. Office hours are for patients. My kitchen is always open to friends. Hmm. Interesting line you're blurring there. But... Jack Crawford has gotten your hands very dirty. I wasn't forced back into the field. Manipulated would be the word I'd choose. I can handle it. <laughs> your experience may have overwhelmed ordinary functions that give you a sense of control. I really want this kitchen. Sleepwalkers demonstrate a difficulty handling aggression. You said Jack sees me as fine china used for a special guests. Oh my god, that was so much deflection. I mean, he really didn't want to answer that question. No, Jack isn't the devil. When it comes to how far he's willing to push you to get what he wants, he's certainly no saint. Are you our killer of the episode? Oh. Schizophrenia? Room is registered to a John Smith. <laughs> Big surprise there. An appalling failure of imagination. Who is dead? Both of them? I'm gonna need you to prepare yourself on this one. Why? Prepare yourself some more. Eat soup in there. Soup? Where's your head? It's on my pillow. I didn't sleep. That's just the thing to wake you up. I like Jack. I don't think he's the devil. He's definitely pushing Will past some boundaries, but not the devil. Holy mother of... Whoa! That... Oh! Oh! <laughs> oh my god! Wow! Okay, I'm awake. I pray they were dead when this happened. Fishing line was used to hold up the bodies and... The wings. At least we know he's a fisherman. I mean, clearly it looks like angels. It's transforming them. I don't know if it was a good night's sleep, but he slept here. Hair on the pillow and the sheets are still damp. Oh! Oh! Girl! He threw up in the nightstand. Yes! Couldn't stomach what he did. Oh. He thinks he's um, 
elevating them somehow. Just a quick question. What is holding them up besides the wire? I need a plastic sheet for the bed. Oh, well. Mm -mm. No, I guess just the wire. Did he like glue their hands or their fingers or like wire their... Well, I guess if you do have your wrists completely limp, your fingers will still stay. This is my gift to you. Now, I lay me down to sleep. It's like the worst back rub in your entire life. Does Hannibal only eat people? Does he have like a, a freezer full of people? Or does he eat regular meat every once in a while? Hey Zoe, hey! A masterpiece for Grand Autorchon with a late harvest of the Vidal sauce. Very nice. She doesn't- Would I be a horrible guest if I skipped this course? Ooh. She's Switch. too She's cruel. She's not impressed. I have no taste for animal cruelty, which is why I employ an ethical butcher. An ethical butcher? Mm -hmm. Human emotions are a gift from our animal ancestors. Cruelty is a gift humanity has given itself. Your perfume is exquisite. Similar to the aroma on the air just after lightning strikes. That is some nose you have there, Doctor. <laughs> he really is quite charming, isn't he? Hey, hey. For our next course, and I assure you, Bella, it was an especially supercilious pick. He's so freaking charming. I will not like him. I will not like him. He's evil. He kills people! They weren't praying to him. They were praying for him. He's afraid. What is somebody who could do something like this afraid of? Hell? That's oh. used for patients with tumors. He's sick. Capra. He was epileptic. Radiation? Gamma 4. Our guy has a brain tumor. And he's afraid he's going to the bad place. He's he's making angels to watch over him. Please come in. Twice a week at first. Now usually just once. Your intention is not to tell Jack. I don't see what good it would do. He already has too much to worry about. Is she talking about an affair or another psychologist? You have a professional relationship with my husband. There's no conflict of interest, me being here? Given the nature of your problems, seeing someone who knows Jack removes some of the guesswork. Nothing undignified about this. Not yet. I resent that Jack has too much to worry about, to worry about me. It's hard enough dealing with how I feel about all of this. There is no one and only spirit. How do you profile someone who has an anomaly in their head changing the way they think? You said he was afraid. He feels abandoned. What were your expectations of Jack Crawford and the FBI? Jack hasn't abandoned me. But at the same time, you find yourself wandering around Wolf Trap in the middle of the night. Please, Doctor, proceed. Jack gave you his word he would protect your headspace. He's pushing that wedge deeper. I'm trying to help you to understand this angel maker you seek. So do you wait until you think I'm asleep before you come to bed? It's not intentional. Does Hannibal not like Jack? So can we have a conversation or you want to pretend that everything's all right? I'm a bit overwhelmed at the moment. With? With things at work. I'm very good at sorting things out. And at the very least, I can underwhelm you while you're being overwhelmed. Yeah. Is there anything I can offer you romantically or physically or spiritually that'll help? I won't insult you by asking you if there's someone else. Thank you. You'll sort out whatever it is you have to sort out. We'll get back to being us. He's a good guy. You are not a good guy. Why angels? That isn't biblical. His angels have wings. He castrated himself? So he isn't just making angels, he's getting ready to become one. So he was afraid of dying, now he's what, getting yeah. used to the he, idea? He's accepting it or he's bargaining. Well, you're the head of the behavioral science unit, Jack. Why don't you come up with your own answers if you don't like mine? Uh, well, because it's kind of your job? I did not hear that. <clears throat> did I? <laughs> Holy fuck, look at them scatter. <laughs> oh. No, you didn't. Sorry. I was out of line. 
you were out of your mind. <laughs> my ears rang like the first time I heard my mom use the F word. <laughs> Are you okay? Do I seem different? You're a little different. Meet Roger and Marilyn Brunner. You might recognize them from such lists as Most Wanted. I wonder how long it took Angel Maker to identify them. He didn't choose them randomly. That is one heck, heck of a coincidence. Could Angel Maker be a vigilante? He asked me if I was having an affair by reassuring me that he didn't have to ask. It's clear you love your husband. Women who love their husbands still find reasons to cheat on them. I don't feel betrayed by Jack. And there's no point in being mad at cancer for being cancer. What it grows and where it's growing it will likely kill you. Oh. It will kill me. Oh, she's terminal. I am slowly shrinking, and yet I feel fine. You will feel fine. Until you don't. Up until the precise moment you don't. The ending is always the same, and that same is that it ends. Makes sense. She can't control that she's going to leave Jack. So she takes control by preemptively getting farther away from him. Or daylight? Is it daylight? Oh, middle of the roof. This would worry me. I would start to become very anxious. I don't like the idea that you wake up somewhere different than when you fall asleep. I, I've slept like once in my life and I did not like it. And that was just from the couch to the bed. I fell asleep on the couch and somehow woke up in bed. It's difficult to lie still and fear going to sleep when it's there to think about. Yeah, I thought about zipping myself up into a sleeping bag before I go to sleep, but it <laughs> sounds like a poor man's straitjacket. Oh, the stag. You're not unlike this killer. My brain is playing tricks on me. Instead, you find yourself in a behavior pattern you can't break. You realize you have a choice. What is it? Angel Maker will be destroyed. You don't have to be. Well, did you just smell me? I really must introduce you to a finer aftershave that smells like something with a ship on the bottle. <laughs> I changed the aftershave. What was that? Hold on. Okay, I'm gonna say this because, like, this will. I, I'm tired of talking over them. I do realize there's a whole lot of dialogue in this show and it's hard to get my own speech in when they're talking. That was... I'm going to let it progress a little bit, but all I'm going to say right now is that was really weird because Hannibal smelled... Zoe? Oh, fudge, what is her name? Jack's wife? I can't remember her name. And didn't bat an eye he got up behind will smelled him and it was like something took him off guard did he he either remembered something or felt something oh my god is that how hannibal chooses his his victims by like their smell is he going to try and kill will i don't know it's just it seemed it was it was very very obviously different than when he has smelled other people. Will was very okay with it. Meet the angel maker. I got him. But what he wanted was to be alone. She just kept pulling away and pulling away. Oh, is it clicking? And then it didn't matter why he was acting the way he was. I wonder if she had a history of cancer. So this is a uh, second occurrence. Oh, crap. It was hardest on them to see him slip away. You need a second? You need a second to yourself, Jack? Oh, my God. He's crying. Your husband is dying. We'd just like to... We'd like to find him before he hurts himself or anyone else. Just you two? No backup? Oh my god, just Will? Jack, please be with him. Okay. Seriously, no backup? Oh my, what are we about to walk into? Is it gonna be people hung up from the ceiling? All over the place? Jeepers Creeper style? Oh. Oh, 
he he did it. To, he made himself an angel. Serial killer that cleans up after himself. This will be the last one. Please don't still be alive. Please don't open your eyes. I'm begging you. Be dead. How? How did he do this to himself? Jump off the rafter and let the... How would his skin purposely fold like that? I don't know how much longer I can be all that useful to you, Jack. Really? You caught three. The last three we had, you caught. I'm used to my wife not talking to me. I don't have to get used to you not talking to me, too. Away? Look no away? No asking you to look alone. But I am looking alone. And you know what looking at this does. It's the next one. It's the one that I know is coming after that. You want to go back to your lecture hall? But that may be what I have to do. This is bad for me. I'm not going to tell you what you ought to do. Seems like that's exactly what you're going to do. And there's killing going on that you could have prevented. It will sour your classroom forever. You want to quit? Quit. I don't, um, I don't think Hannibal's going to be okay with that. Which means he's going to go to Hannibal for advice, and Hannibal's going to give him just what he needs to stay. Was that a hallucination? Oh, no, nope. dude is still alive. I see what you are. I can bring it out of you. Not all the way out. <laughs> oh, it was a hallucination. Good to say, how the hell did he get down from the string? Oh dear. Just popping in on official business? Or did you follow me? You know. I knew you'd find out. Don't get mad. Don't get mad. This is not the time to get mad. Is it treatable? It's stage four. I'm really not prepared to have this conversation right now. Neither am I, but we're having it. We're having it right now. Were you just going to wait until you were in the middle of chemotherapy? Is she not treating it? I don't think I want to do chemotherapy. Do you want to be alone? I don't want you to answer that. Just what, what think do you, about your answer. What do you want, Chuck? I want you to know that I don't want you to be alone. Not now and not ever. No, oh, it's your fight, baby, but I'm in your corner. I appreciate that, Chuck. But I'm not comforted by it. That is a brutally honest conversation. Why wouldn't you tell me? I thought if I kept it to myself, our lives wouldn't change. I didn't count on changing as much as I did. What do you want, Will? I'm gonna sit here until you're ready to talk. You don't have to say a word until you're ready, but I'm not going anywhere until you do. That's one heck of a friend. Like I said, these episodes are just so, they're so much. They're so, so, so much. My brain. Ah, but I'm, I'm involved. I'm intrigued. <laughs> so what was her name? I need to look it up. Bella. I even said it in the episode. Bella, that was her name. Uh, Phyllis. So, okay. Bella, slash Phil, Jack's wife, Bella. I'm just going to call her Bella. Her character is incredibly intriguing to me she hasn't been in the episode very much but i think i think it's just the actress i i know her from other shows and she has a she has an incredible presence so that might be it but yeah bella's character is just very intriguing jack was i think the standout of the whole episode um i just i really really like him and I know that the show in the beginning was trying to kind of pivot him as this big tough guy and in the beginning of this episode they were really trying to drive home that Hannibal sees uh, Jack as like this push figure that's pushing Will but in all honesty I think that's more of just like for some Hannibal is trying something he he I think he wants to make Will conflicted, but not to the point where he leaves the FBI, just more where he confides in Hannibal. But regardless, for me, Jack comes off as just this 
incredible like father figure in the show and he's very protective like even that conversation where will got a little bit snippy with him and he, it was like, was it not like a dad raising his voice? You even had all the little other kids running away. Um, I don't know. I just, I really like Jack. I think he's an awesome communicator. He says what is on his mind. He's incredibly straightforward. He does seem to be very empathetic and able to understand what other people are thinking. He just also seems to be very... Um, not the word, not pushy, but he, he knows what other people are thinking, but he also knows what he wants. His marriage with Bella is, in my opinion, incredibly, just incredible. <laughs> uh, that conversation where they were in bed and he's like just reassuring her that uh, she can trust him. And it was... I mean, that was, if that was not a lesson in like how you should tell someone, it's like, I accept whatever you are giving me. Hello to that. Hannibal was not in this episode a lot. Uh, I, st I have to think about that smelling scene more. <sighs> there is like a tiny, small, tiny little, ch small chunk part of me. <laughs> I doubt it because I think this, what, what year was this show? Uh, Hulu doesn't say what year. Can I look at the description and it won't tell will it tell me? Uh, no, oh, 2013. Okay, so I'm thinking that if this was made in 2013, it would have been a really big deal if Hannibal and Will were a thing. So I'm going to say that it's not going to be that, even though that would make me really happy. But I doubt it. So I am wondering if Hannibal smells his victims and he didn't react to Bella because he doesn't care, but he reacted to Will uh, because he's like, okay, yeah, Will smells just right to eat. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Will's issues are... That conversation that Will had with the one morgue lady is, I think, incredibly emblematic of the show. He's always off, so it is very difficult to figure out what is going on inside that man's head and why. Good luck to Hannibal. I mean, I don't think Hannibal's figuring out what's going inside on inside Will's head so much as he's directing the show inside Will's head. But um, Will is just all over the place in terms of emotion, uh, what he wants. I, I think that Will is very scared of himself. Noise. I think Will is very scared of himself. I don't think he's having a hard time looking. I think he's having a hard time looking away. Um, but that's just me and more of my theory of how Will is eventually going to be a murderer. All right. Well, anyways, <sighs> we've we've gotten through another episode. The, this just this is a big show. <laughs> like if you want to like. Full version is in the description. No spoilers. Hmm. Okay, and I will see you guys next time. Keep eating people. Bye.